Good afternoon, everybody. Walter Kurt here again with another edition of 3K, 3K Consultants Creative Ideas of the Day. Um, I've uh, got a, a panel here today. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a panel. And uh, again, uh, uh, I have Dan on here uh, from Wright's Indian Art. Um, thanks for joining me again, uh, Dan. And Dan will uh, introduce everybody. Hey, Walter. Happy to be a part of this. I uh, just want to introduce some of my friends, uh, Arlen Ben. Arlen, if you want to wave. Arlen is a silversmith and photographer, amongst many other things. Uh, Tim Blueplint Rammel. Tim is a jeweler and he's a flute maker as well and loves fishing. And uh, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> hey, Gene. Gene Billy is a silversmith as well and uh, multi-talented in many other areas. I'm sure he'll tell you about them. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, so my first uh, question is, what are your what are your thoughts on the current situation uh, that's going on? Go ahead, Arlen. <laughs> well, um, it, it you know every now and then, um, I guess we need to realize that. Uh, we, we in this country just need to look at things a little bit differently. It always gives us a challenge. And I think one of the challenges that we see today is, is uh, I guess, just like anything, like when we started school, we always have to get along. There's going to be many opinions, many religions, many different types of ethnic groups that are going to, um, I guess in, in some ways um, have their ideas of, of how America should be. And, you know, the Declaration of Independence is just kind of gives you a, uh, an outline of how it should be that we have to follow as, as we, uh, as it says in the first sentence, we, the people. So then the whole uh, of the, all the people that come to America besides the Native Americans are, are immigrants to start with. And so they bring their ideals, their religion, and persecution that has, they, they have, um, you know, I guess experience from the other countries they had come from. And then when they come to America, it's all differently, you know, all different for them because now they, they get here with, with different uh, view of America than, than what it was in, let's say, in their country, uh, how it was. N now there's rules, now there's different ways of living, and now there's a different way of, um, of uh, educating your children than what it was before. So after all that they have gone through, now, let's say 20 or 30 years down the line, you know, they have grandchildren and now they're, they're, their children are now Americans, and now at this time, you know, it, it, it's kind of like the frustration of, of for them that what America should be, but then the people that are born here in America uh, look, look at the uh, immigrants differently. You know, it's, it's kind of like, well, with, especially the, uh, the, the immigrants have been here only 10 years, five years, uh, it, 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 you know, they get persecuted because of that, just, just the way um, their religion was or the, the way that they look and the way that they dress. I, I remember, um, for me, when I started school, I, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't even, even though I'm Native American, I was born in this country, my, my lineage was, was here probably before Columbus, before even the Vikings came. And, and, and at the same time, I um, did not even speak a word of English, none. My, my first word was the ne. And then later on, we're, we're named uh, Navajo, so forth, so with the different American names. But originally, we stuck with the ne means the people. So from there on, it, I, I had to learn a new language. And, and I know exactly how the immigrants feel when they come to America, where they have to learn a new language, a, a new different religion that they are sometimes forced upon. That they sometimes they bring their own religion and, you know, it's, it's, it's not appreciated or, or given any thought, you know, 
by, by the Americans that are living here already. So as my life continued from uh, when I was younger, I, I had to learn English. I had to learn a new uh, type of way of living uh, aside from what was traditionally brought up to me. And I, I think right now um, that the way we see uh, America today, I, it, it's really difficult to separate everybody, which we shouldn't. But we, we need to just get back to where, uh, what America, the way, the way that we always uh, think of or the way we should strive towards it. It's not going to be perfect. But at least we need to try uh, all of us to get along and, and, and to seek out ways to help one another. I, I remember when I was younger, um, my father, um, we didn't have a whole lot, but we always helped the community every which way we can, either, either by bringing food to the elder or, 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 or helping people just with their homes or anything. We always, uh, it, it wasn't just on a weekend, it wasn't on a Sunday, it, it was Monday through Sunday. It didn't matter what day. It did, it, and it wasn't always because of religious reasons either. It was just because we need to, to help one another. And I think that is what, that's what's missing in America right now is that uh, people helping one another, not, not because of how much you make or what religion you are or what color skin you are, just to help. And, and if we do that, I, I think a lot of this things that the, the, the uh, government is throwing money at will probably disappear or maybe even cut in half because of that. And I, I, I read many religions through college and, and if people would just live what they believe in, and I bet a lot of this racial thing would disappear. And that's what's missing right now is, is nobody's reading what they believe in. And, Thank you. And, yeah, and no, nobody <laughs> the, is. <laughs> the, the, and, and that's what's missing in this world. And, and, and my, my dad has always said, you know what? There's actually one creator. And he has visited every continent in this world. And he knew that there wouldn't be just one religion or one way of praying to the creator. And, and we always say that um, in the mountains, there's, there's a creator, in the river that's created, in the, in, the, in the land, the air. You know, and, and he always said that everything that we do, you know, we realize that the, 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 whatever we do on this earth, whether we're outside or inside, things have eyes. And I, and I always ask, what do you mean he has eyes? Like, well, if you go outside and do bad, you, you have, you know, birds, you have animals, you have insects that know what you're doing. You're accountable. And here inside as, as human beings, we, we have our own. We are held accountable what we say, we are held accountable what we do. It doesn't have to be a religion to, to make you be, be a kind person. You just, you just should be. And and it and it doesn't take a gun to change people's mind either. And you know, it's a long time ago. Just take a few erased all the guns, all the disease, everything that we have created for ourselves, and start over. But what, what, the, the number one thing that we will probably thing that that will probably be left to do is probably two things. Is, is, is to enjoy your family and actually talk to each other. And I think that's what's missing right now is people talking to each other. It's always from a distance. And I think the, you know, in a way the social media has really destroyed a lot of things. It, it is, is to actually be there to go over to somebody's home to do something, you know, and, and to look at things and, and to actually be feeling things. And, and I think there are a lot of things that right now is what you might say past feeling, you know? <laughs> it, we, we just don't feel it anymore. And, 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 and that's missing. And then the, the society that is created now, as we see it now, that, that's what's happening. 
there, there, there's really, there, you know, it, it's playing out in, our, in right in front of our eyes. What, what, what we had created ourselves. Hey, Arlen, doesn't that, uh, well, actually, I'll, I guess I'll ask Tim to chime in too. Isn't, isn't that one of the challenges with COVID, especially with these two distinct things that are going on right now in society with the racial things and, and COVID, um, getting into somebody's house and, and just being friendly and, and, you know, doing what people used to do instead of talking over a computer like we're doing right now, like we're sort of forced to do right now. Um, what do you yeah. think, Tim? You know, I think the technology is really, it's a, it's a very, very strong tool but it's not the means to every end. Um, I, I agree with Arlen. I mean, um, we haven't had too many discussions, but we've, you know, we've chatted a little bit about, about the world and, and what's going on. And I think that, you know, we've always had strength and diversity. And that's one of the things that, that really makes America stand out, you know, amongst other countries. You know, in the past, we've always recognized the, the diversity and we've always taken the best of that diversity and, and, and created our, you know, our society as it is. And it's been a great strength. I also really agree that communication, you know, um, while the technology is great and it allows us to do a lot of things that we've never been able to do before. I mean, my gosh, you know, we don't even have to go to a library anymore. There's this thing called Google and, and Siri. You know, we could we have all this magnificent information and images and, and videos at, at our fingertips wherever we are. You know, it's not the old telephone that, that, you know, just hanging on the wall in the kitchen if we were lucky enough to have one. And, but I think the biggest thing, like Arlen said, you know, we forget how to have a conversation. A civil conversation. It seems, it seems to me that the division is so great within our country right now. There's no two people with differing ideas being able to sit down and share ideas. You know, so the conversation is gone. The 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 respect for for others is gone. I think that that's just such a huge issue that we have right now. Um, you know, I grew up, I, I did not grow up, you know, on the reservation. My, my father was in the Marines and uh, for 22 and a half years, and he served five combat tours. And so we moved around quite a bit when I was young. Um, and, and my mom was, you know, she was mom and dad. Um, and she's pretty hard on us. But she needed to be, you know, she didn't have the luxury to say, you know, wait till your dad comes home. And I think, I think that we see that a lot now, even, even expanded more greatly in single family, single, single parent homes. Um, my mom was tough. My mom was tough because she had to be, you know, and, and I think that it's a really, really hard job. And as I've, as I've gotten older and as I, you know, reached the age that I'm at, I look back and I think about all these things and I think about all the different lessons and, and things in life. And, you know, it was necessary for that. And it's necessary for that now. You know, we have, we have to rearrange, I think, our boundaries and our respects and our understandings for each other and be able to come together as a common, as a common people, as human beings you know, and, and be able to have these conversations. And if we don't agree, we don't just jump just to hate or to try and talk over each other, you know, and to force our opinion and our beliefs on, on everyone around us. I think that there is a common respect and language and conversation that can and should be had um, to bring us all back together because together is where our strength is. Absolutely. That's a, that's an excellent point. And it always has been that way. Um, I think Gene has a different experience too, because he's in front of people all day as he's a part-time essential worker in addition to being an artist. So from your point of view, Gene, um, since you get to see people more than we all do in person, what do you see? Well, the, um, this divisiveness, the, um, COVID-19 really, um, you know, the human action 
Pete's stop, as Arlen and Tim brought up, that the human interaction really did stop, except for essential businesses like Dan said. But what happened was, I think it, the frustrations of the COVID-19 just built up in a lot of people, you know, and the, um, it hit home and a lot of people, frustrations built up, the racism and stuff erupted, you know, just the domestic violence at home erupted. You know, it wasn't just the basic racism. It's, it's an overall thing, you know, crime in certain areas evolved, you know, uh, people, you know, it's just, just the COVID-19 was just disruptive in all sense. And um, what I do see is that people are doing staying home and people are um, uh, obeying the law, at least here in New Mexico. And um, with that, I do see a lot of progress in sales. I do, um, we, uh, we run a shipping uh, mailing outlet and um, um, I swear, um, I think online sales, well, we go back to social media here. Um, it's a platform that a new language we have to learn, you know, getting set up to do the Zoom here, it took us like 10 minutes to actually <laughs> do that. So we have to go back to school. We have to learn new things and we don't necessarily have to go back to school, but we just have to self teach each other new things. And um, it's a level playing field for everyone, you know, um, this disruption, the, 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 the classifications of race, you know, religion and all that. All that aside, we have to learn how to survive still as artists, you know. So bottom line is that we just still have to communicate, but we have to advance ourselves with technology and so forth. Um, the sales are there, the people are buying, and um, that's my bottom line. That's um, what I can add to this piece of conversation. I don't want to add to the negativity that's already going on. You know, we see it on the news too much already. We see it, we hear it. I deal with interactions every day with people. I deal with a broad variety of people, different races. We talk, we do have a common ground. You know, there's people out there that do want to reach a common ground and they're, they're seeking it because they're frustrated too. They're tired of this. So we can just all calm down. We'll all find ourselves, you know, and um, I think this will work out in the end. But for right now, um, this people not interacting, the gatherings we're so used to, the large art shows we're so used to, all the other stuff as artists, you know, has um, literally put an end to a lot of our lives. So what we have to do right now is adjust to that with technology. I hate to say that, but social platforms. And um, young people, don't give up. I encourage you as much as you can because you have the advantage now you know the social platforms. We have to learn it as old timers, you know? So <laughs> it's a level playing field. Don't get discouraged by the COVID. Don't get discouraged by the racism. Don't get discouraged by whatever, you know? Concentrate on you and create. Very nice. It's a great message. And I could see that when you said old timers, Tim Blue Flint said in his mind, I'm not an old timer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no, I'm well aware. <laughs> Every morning when my feet hit the floor. <laughs> That's right. Well, look, I'm going to back to, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I see some young jewelers and uh, I'm an old timer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll, uh, I'll get it back to Walter. We have maybe seven or eight minutes left, so we'll do sort of a lightning round on the next couple of questions. So everybody, exactly. uh, good, concise answer that helps us move uh, forward through the questions so we can get to it all. But thank you all for such thoughtful and, and deep answers because this is the kind of things that we need to talk about. So it means a lot that we can, you know, hear this from other people um, that not everybody knows themselves. So nice, uh, nice set of answers and, and nice thoughtfulness in them. So go ahead, Walter, I'll give it back to you. So uh, the second question and um, just, just one thing, um, what, what have you done to, to kind of work through um, this, this situation? Just maybe just one, one real quick tip. Um, that you personally have have utilized um, to to get through these times. All right, we'll start with uh, Tim on this one. Um, well, I mean, really, you know, the COVID, because like a lot of artists, you know, my my studios are at home, hasn't really changed my day to day. The thing that it's changed is my traveling for shows, and what have you. Um, but what I've been doing to try and, and move forward and move through this in a new way is I've been having conversations with other artists, gallery owners, museums, 
Dan and I have spent an awful lot of time on the phone talking about the current climate and where we expect it to go. And, and what I've come to realize is that we really don't know where this is going. So what we've got to do is we've got to make an educated guess. And then we have to be, we have to be observant enough and flexible enough to be able to make adjustments on the way. But, but Gina's right. You know, business is good. Business is out there. Sales are out there. There's a way through this, you know, and we just have to be uh, a little more inventive, a little more creative. And we have to reach out. We have to reach out and we have to be reachable. All true. And uh, we'll, uh, we're going to do one more on this question, then the next question, the next person will start it. So I'll go to Gene on this question as well. Well, um, fortunately, I've been, um, been in business for quite a while, old timer. I've uh, established quite a relationship with collectors. And um, through this COVID, I've been fortunately still making orders and completing orders. But should that stop? You know, and then like Tim said, I got to start brainstorming and um, being collective and, um, you know, uh, uh, getting uh, learning social platforms. Not only that, um, I'm involved with uh, Native Jewel Society, as well as the Council for Indigenous Arts and Culture, which was literally put at a standstill as well because of the COVID. But we're regrouping, um, we're, we, we had to change direction because all everything is changed to online. So, um, but with that, we're working to help artists and hopefully in the future, we can establish relationships with artists. We can get them more contacts with them. We can establish a whole community for, you know, something like um, the other organizations that are doing up in Santa Fe and so forth. You know, they're establishing artist communities and um, that's what needs to be done. And I think uh, if we just continue doing that, um, providing um, people with authentic Native American art, certificate of authenticity to every artist that's out there have one it's a legal binding document so please have one and it prevents frauds you know fakes and frauds from floating around in this earth so if you have one of these you're an artist very important you have a legal document certificate of authenticity a sales receipt works you know so you protect yourself as well as you're protecting your artist community as well uh so the the question that I um, had asked was what tips or suggestions or um, creative ideas that you have possibly used um, to, to kind of weather, weather this, this storm per se? Well, for me, it was um, I, just like with the, with the other two gentlemen here, um, nothing's really changed when, the, when we were kind of on lockdown. We we're always in our studio or we're working or doing other things. But I, ever since I was younger, I've, I've made um, a, a, an effort to study um, not just Native American jewelry, but other jewelers. And also with photography, I, I, I either look at it in that or looked at um, notebooks, magazines, anything I could get my hands on and, and study. I, I, I never took classes on photography. So what I did was I just started, I, I bought my camera and I just started using it. And then pretty soon I understood the depth of field, uh, lighting, uh, just everything, everything that I can get my hands on. Uh, that's pretty much how I did it. And I, I, what I did was um, I, I started waking up earlier and I studied for like maybe three hours before I even started jewelry again. And I did that for six months, a uh, crash course kind of like. And with that six months, I learned so much in photography. And, and there was two things that I, um, I discovered uh, in, in photography that, that um, I looked everywhere on the internet, see anybody who's doing it. But there is a way to increase your uh, megapixels on your camera, on the camera itself, and also on the on the photograph itself. No, nobody's ever done that. So, and and the way to show a proof, I did that one time. I I posted it on uh, Facebook that that my camera that I have is a Nikon D eight hundred, which is thirty six uh, megapixels. And I managed to bring it up to 195 megapixels. 
meaning that you can do, you know, a freeway, freeway poster like size pre pretty much. And then instead of buying, uh, instead of buying the uh, Hasselblad uh, 125 megapixels was $60,000, I, I managed to do the same thing with my camera, what the Hasselblad did, but better because the Hasselblad is on the 125 and I got mine to 195. And the same thing with the cameras, I, um, on the F-stop, you know, I, I, I have my camera, the, um, which is the D800, and I put a uh, 105 millimeter prime. And the prime only went to 36 F-stops. I managed to uh, crank it up all the way to almost 60 F-stops. And it worked. Sounds and, like and the, and the and the clarity that I got from that is just incredible. It's like the what you see when they see the Hubble telescope, but the Hubble telescope is what two point five million. <laughs> 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 but you know, when I when I was photographing um, um, the turquoise book that we, that was coming out uh, next month. And that's what I used. I, I uh, increased everything that I managed to use. I, I, um, I, I just went full bore on it. And I learned a lot in one year of photographing the whole book. And I found out that you don't need the big fancy strobes that everybody's trying to do to you. You can use a flashlight and just get a, a good photograph of a, of a yellow or a green photograph of turquoise. Or if you use a blue light, you can use the blue uh, turquoise without using filters. It's just managing the, um, the speed. That's all it is. And, and, and also the lighting on it. And I, when I first started photographing the turquoise, I, I thought you had to have this big old, you know, strobe system, you know, $2,200 plus this, you know. At, at the end, I came out with just using my flashlight. <laughs> and, and, and it produced one of the most incredible photographs you'll see, which in that new turquoise book is coming out next month. You'll see what I mean. And, and also I increased my, um, my megapixels on that without buying a, uh, a $60,000 camera. So, and also to jewelry, I, um, I did the same thing. I study every day and I try to learn something every day. That's why when you see my, my jewelry on Facebook, it's always different because I, I try to strive to do things differently every day, whether it's traditional, contemporary, or, or just something that's very detailed. And I don't cast anything, so there's a lot of filing, a lot of things that are different. And I also taught myself how to set diamonds and everything else. and and you know, I, every once in a while, I just to take a break, I would go weld something, you know, so I bought a huge, this huge <laughs> SA, um, <laughs> SA 200 uh, leaking welder, the pipe welder, just to keep me busy. And then I go back to work and appreciate it. I'm so glad I'm not a welder outside, you know. <laughs> so that, so that $60,000 so $60, you saved, you bought a welder up for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, well, I, you know, it's like when you do with jewelry, you kind of trade here and there, then you got to rebuild this, uh, you know, so. <laughs> so every, everything that I learned out there, whether it's welding, jewelry, photography, I taught myself how to do it. I didn't go to school for it. You know, the only thing that I went to school for was art, but it was mostly drawing and painting. So I, I, I know how to paint. I know how to uh, draw, but I haven't always wanted to go back to that. But it's everything that I do is draw me back to photography or, you know, to, to, to um, jewelry and stuff like that. So. So that's what kept me busy during the time of uh, of uh, be, be, being being uh, in the house and in the studio all the time. So, if I may, I, I think yeah. I, I I really agree with with Arlen, and and I think he makes a really really cool point. That is that as artists, as business people, as human beings, you know, we always have to invest in ourselves. Exactly. But investment doesn't always mean money. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes it's time and sometimes it's knowledge and sometimes it's, I think it's important to give yourself the room within whatever profession that you're in. Just give yourself the room to be able to fail. Because even in failure, there's a lesson. Very true. It, it, very, very yeah, true. It's so important because a lot of the, the stuff that you do or make, 
doesn't always make it to the, to the cell either. I remember one time I was looking at a documentary and reading about Picasso. It, it, he, he actually threw away four times the paintings that he has done it as it is in the museums right now. He threw them into, in the trash because, because he didn't think it was, it was worth it, you know? And here everybody's like, why, you know? That's, sometimes, you know, some, sometimes we strive yeah. for, sometimes we strive for that perfection. Yep. Well, you know, when I when I first started making flutes, Arlen, and you'll you'll appreciate this. I mean, I I fixed many of them until I broke them. <laughs> you know, I just kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it because if you don't push beyond those boundaries, you're going to miss the lesson. So right. this was the lesson that I got out of all of those broken flutes. It doesn't matter how expensive the wood is, Arlen. The s'mores taste the same. <laughs> <laughs> so uh my my final question is um and and this can be either professionally or personal what what do you see the future going forward um once we i, I guess specifically once we 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 come out of covid and who who knows when that's going to be what do you think gene well, um, I still think that um, social distancing is still going to be major involvement for a long time because a lot of people are still afraid to, you know, uh, interact. And um, again, we, um, we're going to have to fall back on technology. And um, I, I think that, um, you know, just relearning technology, um, communications, community, you know, a lot of networking. Um, just Arlen brought up a lot uh, uh, in the beginning that we just got to help each other. You know, basically, I think we can all thrive. We can get through this if we just all work together as a unit, you know, rather than being this and that and him or her, you know, we just need to, you know, be collective as, as, as a whole, as a Native American artist group and try to achieve and support each other and, um, you know, we see a post on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook a lot lately, but I'm going to have to and repost people who are posting jewelry, you know, sharing their pages, sharing, liking their pages, hearting their pages, you know, you got to start communicating that way and so that we do support others as well. You know, it's a, it's a big difference when an artist sees another artist, especially a big name artist, like your post, you know, and other people see that, they're like, wow, Arlen liked my post, you know. <laughs> make the artist feel good, as well as it makes the public appreciate that artist Arlen does like this, you know, particular piece this artist created. So it, it, it's sharing, you know, everything just needs common ground is basically helping each other. And Arlen said it best earlier. So I think um, there is a bright light in the tunnel somewhere, and um, we just got to stay positive and keep forcing and um, promoting each other in a community-based atmosphere. I think that's a really valid point, uh, you know, being on the gallery side of things and, you know, having relationships with people like you guys and, and many others um, that do, you know, everything by hand and, and all this one of a kind work. And, you know, it's coming from a place of, of caring about what you're putting out. It's not just a piece of jewelry. It means something much deeper than that. Um, I think the community aspect is both underrated. Uh, well, actually not both. It's underrated and underutilized, but it's also the best thing that can be done is uh, community becoming stronger and stronger allows people to, to move forward. And it doesn't matter who those people are. It could be anybody, whether they're a brand new artist in this case, or whether they're like you guys who've been around and, and seen a lot and are still working, or whether they're an artist who's 75 years old and just learning how to use Facebook. You know, it really, um, the community aspect, especially in the kind of community we're a part of, is of the utmost importance if you want to advance uh, and stay around. And so it doesn't matter if one person's successful, it matters that everybody has at least a chance to be. And then from there, it's about educating yourself, like Arlen's talking about. It's about, um, you know, fixing it until it breaks, like Tim is talking about. And um, I think that without that, it really, everything else you're doing, it, it's not going to be near as impactful if the community is not a part of it or a part of your thought process. Very, very true. Um, so 
would you would everybody like to take just an opportunity to add add anything else? <laughs> I think all right. Go, go ahead, James. James. Go ahead. Go ahead <laughs> <laughs> What's your campaign are, platform, Arlen? I'm learning a lot from you guys. I, I'm just sitting back and just listening. But, but I mean, I, I'll, I'll go ahead. I mean, I, I think in looking ahead, um, we really don't know what, what the future has in store for us. And, and so, again, I think, you know, to go forward, sometimes we have to go backwards. Sometimes we have to take a few steps back and, and just um, – clear the room, clear the mind, um, you know, set aside preconceived notions and, and rely on the community around us. I mean, I know Arlen that, uh, that you've been quite a mentor for me over the years. Um, I watched your photography just go crazy. I've always been an admirer of both you and, and Jean. Um, I've always been an admirer of your work and I'm always inspired by your work. And I think that, you know, we as, as artists, and I mean, not just native artists, I mean, as artists, you know, I, it, it seems like our collectors and our clients and our friends, because we're artists, they perceive that we see the world in a different way than they do. And, I think that's what draws them to us because they want to experience, you know, how we see the world, how we interpret it. And, and the way that we interpret it is through our art and what we put forward. Um, and I have to add this real quick, Gene, I hope you uh, accept my friend request on Facebook. But <laughs> that being said, um, you know, we, we rely on each other a lot. And I, and I think that that is, a really good roadmap for humanity from here forward. You know, again, uh, recognize our diversities and celebrate it and bring the best of all, of all of our diversities together. And that's, and we combine those and that's how we become stronger. Oh, as, I think we lost as a community. There's Gene. Oh, he's back. Hey, you lost you know? <laughs> Welcome back, Gene. I think you missed. <laughs> I, I think you missed. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Tim, but I think I think Gene sorry. missed uh, right that, right that you sent him a friend. You sent him a friend sorry, request. Gee, I, I put my hand in front of your camera, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, you know, and, and I think that what we're doing right now is another big thing that that we need to do. You know, um, um, we've all had troubles in our life and and sometimes we just have to take a couple steps back and look around and find something to be grateful for grateful for our friends grateful for our families grateful for the relationships that we have with our right. with our collectors and our clients and 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 celebrate that and celebrate them you know um you know i was always taught in our traditional ways you know for my people that we really couldn't pray for ourselves and so it, it brought a community together because we all prayed for each other, not ourselves. And so that just creates a sense of community and respect and, and understanding. And I think that um, going forward, that's really got to be our goal, you know, as far as art and artists, um, you know, for young people that are just starting, the biggest thing that I can tell you is that I noticed a huge shift in my paradigm as far as art when I stopped worrying about the sale today, you know, and, and nurtured today for tomorrow, you know, and not going from sale to sale to sale to sale. And once you make that for me, once I made that commitment to myself, it changed, it changed everything. You know, when you start looking for tomorrow, and that's, and that's really what we've all been taught anyway in our culture is, is always being um, thankful for the people that, that protected our culture and brought it forward to give us the opportunity. But it's also our responsibility now to, um, to create that path forward and to educate and to share our knowledge and our, and our work with the people that are following. That's the way that 
that we create community. That's the way that we create the future. And that's really, um, really, really good advice um, and very wise words. I, I look at my industry that I've been a part of for 29 plus years, and I look at it, um, having been in it for this long, I, I look at it as a partnership. And with partnerships, uh, it, it builds community. And with community, it builds a even wider circle. Um, so it's, I, I can relate a, a lot in, in, in what you're saying. Who, uh, who else wants to check on that? You want to add anything, Gene? Well, um, I like to say that, um, again, I'm a, um, a forest that uh, it's very important, going back to Native American arts, um, that uh, we might have to, or we are going to have to go to relay and online sales and protect yourselves. You know, this is to the customers, this is to collectors out there. Protect yourselves from online sales. There's still a lot of fakes and frauds that are floating around out there. Um, the Council for Indigenous Arts and Culture was um, designed by uh, the late Tony Araccio, and it, would, it brought a community fighting against the fakes and frauds, but it was down at a, at, a, at a gathering level to where we interact with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We attended art shows, we did museum presentations, we did gallery presentations, we booked events on our own to, you know, to educate the public about the fakes and frauds in the jewelry industry. But it's still going on in the uh, in, on eBay a lot, and um, so just uh, protect yourselves. Buy directly from artists if you can, or respectable galleries like the Wrights Gallery there, and um, you know just uh, be aware and know what you're buying for because the, a lot of artists are going to be relying on you, the customers, to sustain our ability to create. You know um, the fakes and frauds are still taking food off our table. And it's bigger, bigger situation than we can ever imagine now because of the online sales. So um, let's let's all work together. And um, I think the bottom line here and what we've got to was a community-based oriented relationship between all artists, you know. And um, I think that we um, just a short time, you know, a lot of common ground was uh, accomplished. Imagine what can happen within a week's time or a month's time of more collective artists coming together. You know, this could be a major movement, actually. So that's what I see in the future. What you got, Arlen? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, maybe just a 30 second thing on the uh, the race thing. Um, I, I remember when I was uh, younger, we, I used to sit in on the, some of the ceremonies and um, this older generation, was, uh, one thing that really stuck to me is what they said was, um, it, it, you know, there's no sense of um, uh, feeling anger or animosity towards other races because, you know, it, they, the, the thing that struck me is what they said about other races. They just said one thing was somebody had to make them, you know, and somebody that made them love them. But you know, and, and the other thing too, is that any, any type of racism is uh, taught. So, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, we, we go through a, a lot of um, things right now as, as a people and through a race that certain religions come up and, and you know, I mean, it's, it, I, I, when I was younger, I used to just talk to everybody about what they believe in. And and one thing that always stuck when there was to love one another. It does it doesn't matter where in the world you come from. And that was the one thing, is is to to help one another and to love one another. And and the other thing too is that since um, everybody else was made by somebody, I mean, it, it just makes sense to, you know, not just one race was made by the superior being. It, that that didn't happen. Everybody you know, was made by, 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 by the creator and, and whoever we believe in and how we believe in. So, and then it just comes down to, you know, to, 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 um, to love one another and to work with each other and, and get things done. And, and, and 
sometimes other people's ideas are, are not always the same as yours, but it, it all ends up to you as an individual, how, how you do things and, and being an example. And that, that that always works, you know, better than to, to speak out, you know, in some ways it's good to speak out, but, it, but as, as uh, how, how you do things and the way you do things uh, are, speaks louder than, than, than what you say a lot of times. And, and now for the future, I, I think for the Native American art, um, it, it starts at home because a, a lot of the things that I see today, um, you can just see the, the design uh, of somebody starting young and the older generation and, and, and somebody that's just kind of like going in and out that, that they haven't really got their style yet. I, the reason why I say starts at home because we, we as an older generation have a responsibility to teach the younger generation what, what is sacred and what cannot be um, brought out there and so forth that, that, that is sacred to us. And, and, uh, and there's, there was always, a, you know, we, we, uh, kind of like a boundary where it's just a respect. And, and, and that's, uh, I always felt that, that that should be done. And so at the other day out on the, on the internet, I saw one young kid um, actually record a, uh, a ceremony and then post, post it on Facebook. And I, I just thought, why, you know? I mean, this, this is something that's, that, um, you know, it's just out of respect to, to, to uh, not only that, but to, you know, to, to judge something like that on there. And then people that have no understanding of what they're even saying or so forth, you know, you know, it's just, I just like at that, you know, so our responsibility as a whole generation, I think is good to say something when it needs to be said, but at the same time, you know, teach a lot and, and to share. So um, with my photography and with um, my jewelry, uh, the way I, I teach sometimes at the Novel Nation Museum, uh, I don't charge a dime. Every time I do the Novel Nation Museum, I just, I just share it. And uh, a lot of times we'll be there all day, and then and then I, um, a younger generation just ask me a question, I, and I just try to show it as best as I can how I do it. I'm sure there's better ways, <laughs> always a better way, but that this is how I did it, and then I just tell them that you can go from here and build on that, and uh, and so forth. So I I think that's number one thing, and the other thing too, a lot of people don't know is that I used to be too when I was younger. You know, I used to help my mom bead. Uh, one of my, my mom was one of the first ones to do that peyote stitch, which is a round object or anything like a keychain or something along the rope, like how they do bolos. I, I remember people from the um, from the plains, like Oklahoma and all over, they used to come to our house and camp out. And my mom would just sit there and teach and she didn't charge a dime. And the and all the the women and the men that we all used to help each other at making dinner or breakfast or whatever or clean the house, and then the teaching would be, would begin again, and uh, this was in the '60s, and uh, she learned that way way back. I don't know how far back when she used to uh, when she was younger, and she did these other type of beatings that I remember that she used to do. Um, it's kind of like a floral thing right before. The, well, now a lot of people are doing it, but the way she did it, it was it was way different. But art is always with us, and 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 also it's it's a for me it was a, a good thing for me to make a living in some ways, you know. To, but but it's always a continued education; it never stops, and and it's not stagnant. It's every day, no matter where I go, everything is art to me. Where do you see a sign? Where they see a license plate, where they see uh, uh, like a grocery advertisement, somebody had to draw it, somebody had to do something with it, or you see a vehicle, tires, anything. Everything that we see that is not natural has been drawn by somebody else. That's art. And people don't realize that that's what art is. Every day, no matter going to the city, we go out in the country, we see art. Somebody had to draw it, somebody had to develop it. So uh, even a toothbrush, somebody had to draw it. 
you know, and, and, and the way it's designed, everything that we see, uh, even if the, we look at our background, you know, see these lights up here, you know, the way the colors are and everything, you know, it, that's art. And, and it's not just what we have on our wrists, it's not what we have on our walls, you know. So it, it, uh, even if you sit in your vehicle today, going home, look at the dashboard, you know, that somebody had to draw it. You know, so it, uh, it, it's, it's not really just, you know, we see on our walls in a museum. Very, very true. You know, so, so some of the best art you ever see, you might be a Lamborghini or Ferrari or, or, you know, or Ford Shelby down the road. That's art. That's moving art, you know. But if somebody's driving it. So I, even the other day, I was uh, looking at the, uh, the rocket launch. I look at that rocket it's like from, from the sense that Apollo 11 to here, I go, boy, those, those rockets look cool, you know. <laughs> Same thing, you know. I mean, it's something. You know, and, and, and I like that. The main thing that I really look at was, uh, I remember when the astronauts landed on the moon and look at, look at their helmets. Now look at their helmets today, you know. I mean, it's so much different than the way, the way things are. And, you know, I look forward to the future in Native American art. I mean, there's so many great things that are going to be done, you know, by, by Native artists and, and, um, and, uh, and other artists that we look at throughout the world, too. I, I look and be fascinated by how, what other people have done, not just jewelry and painting, but also metal art, you know, and, and, and different sculptures. Uh, I'm always fascinated by anything. I, I um, you know, and that's, I guess that's it right now. <laughs> okay, Dan? Yeah, just um, enjoyed this conversation and it's, uh, very it's been much nice so. How everybody's uh, looking at the current times, but the future as well. And I can say that uh, there's <clears throat> there's a lot that can be done. Always, nothing nothing is done ever. So whatever you do to move forward uh, as a person, or for your family, or for your art, or whatever it is you do in your life, um, I think one of the keys is moving forward always, and not just sitting around and saying it'll come it'll come to me, and it'll find me. Um, be a productive member of your community, whatever your communities are be productive within those communities, help other people. Uh, those are all basic tenets of, of regular life. It's nothing new. It's nothing that's uh, shocking to think about or hard to do. It's just a mindset of deciding that that's how you're gonna live and that's how you're gonna exist. And if more and more people do that, it always will lead to different and better results and more growth and better communities. And, and that's just a, a bottom line, that's just a fact. So I think if you wake up every day with some purpose as to as to what you're doing and how you're living, then you have a chance to do more than, than you did before. And if we do that, then we can, you know, go by that famous quote of being the change that you want to see in the world. Well, you can, you really truly can every day, any day uh, with your friends, by yourself, with your family, doesn't matter. You can decide that that's what, that's what you want to do and then you can do it. So, you know, that's for the future that those things have to happen um, all the time anyways for humanity to move forward. But I think it's really pertinent now where people are stuck at home or feel like they're stuck at home. Um, even if they get outside, they still feel like they've been stuck at home all the time. So it's really different, you know, except for these guys who are working in their studios all the time. It's just the same. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but exactly. yeah, I, I believe that you do have to, you know, now's the time to innovate. Now's the time to make decisions. Now's the time to do something you haven't tried yet uh, because what else are you doing? So exactly it well, it's always good to get out once in a while you know <laughs> <That's> <laughs> true. very very true well i i want to thank you uh very much dan for for getting uh all of these fine gentlemen together um i've thoroughly enjoyed uh speaking with uh all of you and uh i hope uh things uh uh get get up and moving here um fairly quickly and as i always say at the end of these um, wonderful interviews and meetings. Um, love, kindness, and stay safe. Well, I have a question for the for you. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what 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 do you like in Native American art? You know, you like paintings, you like the rugs, you like the jewelry. Um, the I I like kachinas. I like jewelry. Um, uh, sand paintings. 
Um, Come on, flutes. Come on, flutes. <laughs> <laughs> my, that, that probably that probably actually would be be more my wife because she she plays the plays the clarinet or or did play the clarinet. So um, that's probably more on on her end. So, but yeah, we <laughs> we we love a, a lot of a lot of American art. I mean, it's it's yeah. you know it's and and I I grew up. Um, as as a kid going to New Mexico with um, with my parents and so that's where I acquired you know my love of Native American art. So what 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 uh what would you say to somebody that's just starting don't know where to start collecting Native American art? Um, find something that you like and um, acquire one piece um, and go go from there. Um, you know, it's 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 not necessarily um, that you have to collect, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of pieces. Um, start with with what you like, um, and that that's what I do. When people ask me what I collect, it's I I have collections of all sorts of things, um, and I don't collect it for necessarily for monetary value. I collect it because I like it. Um, and it has some type of, of meaning to me um, in one way, shape, or form. Um, so that's, that's the thing. Some people collect things because they, they go, well, it's going to be worth this much money down the road. But for me, it, it's not about that. It's, it's what I like. And if I like it, I, I, I want it. Um, um, and, and I'd like to, to have it. So um, that's the way I look at at. At, at things. You did. You know, the first time when you ever heard uh, Native Americans speak their language. What, what? When was that in your life? Um, probably when I was like nine-ish to twelve-ish, probably. Ireland um, also. I bet, I, bet we, I bet we had the same feeling because. Um, <laughs> When I went from the from the reservation to the school, I was six years old. I never heard English before, and I, well, I was trying to understand it. Then, then at the same time, I had to learn English, and then I had to do homework in English. So, <laughs> so I, I understand what you're what you're saying. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna cut this off here, and uh, y'all have a great uh, rest of your day. And thanks again for for joining me today. I appreciate it.